Your ISP is watching you and your downloads are not as private as you think they are. Today's video is going to be all about how to get Qubit set up with a VPN and port forwarding on TrueNAS scale for complete privacy when you're using your Qubit client. So let's jump right in. I'm going to show you guys first off what I'm using and then I'm going to show you how to build it. So right now this is my TrueNAS scale instance and in my apps I have Dockage set up. Let's jump into the Dockage UI. You can see I have a full R stack here, which I deployed all as one gigantic Docker Compose file. But within that Docker Compose file, there is QBitTorrent. You'll see that right here. This is the QBitTorrent section. Uh, I'm using the Hodio container, which is the container I'm going to teach you guys to use today. This is all the information I put in here. I'm going to show you how to do that. And when I launch into it, this is what it looks like. Pretty simple bone stock installation of Qubit, but this is very special because this Qubit is completely behind an Air VPN WireGuard config file. So I'm going to show you guys just a little bit of basically how to get this set up so you guys can get to where I am using this kind of a setup. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to Air VPN and you're going to want to make yourself an account and you're going to want to get VPN uh WireGuard configuration files. So what I'm going to do from here, this is the client area tab. Once you're logged in, um, you're going to want to come over here and you are going to want to make a new configuration file. So over here, it says config generator. I know this is not the prettiest interface that put all the money in the VPN, not the actual UI. So I'm going to want to come over here to config generator. I'm going to want to do Linux. And I'm going to do WireGuard here, just like that. And I'm also going to check this thing for advanced. So there we go. So in here, one thing I want to do is I want to take and I want to make it only IPv4. If you're working with another VPN and they give you IPv6, you need to pull all that stuff out because if you're going to use the Hodio container, IPv6 is not going to work. The Hodio container just doesn't like IPv6. So the nice thing about AirVPN, which is what I recommend you use, and I'm going to put a link in the video description in order for you guys to sign up, um, is going to be that they give me the option here to just go IPv4 so I don't have to make any adjustments to the WireGuard file. Next thing to do is I'm going to come all the way down here and I'm going to pick my device. I made a special device called Test just for the purposes of this video. And the reason I made this device is because I'm going to show you my public and private keys, which would usually be enough for you to rip my VPN information and get free VPN time. But by the time you watch this video, I will have deleted this device, making the WireGuard file that I'm about to show you completely obsolete. So please don't try to pause the video and steal all the information. You can't get connected like that. But I'm going to show you how to do it today. So I like to do, you can pick any server you want. I'm going to hit Control F real fast and type in 20 thousand because that'll show me the fastest server so this one right here in bulgaria 20,000. i'm just going to take this one any 20,000 megabit server will work for me i'm not very picky let's close my little find bar down here and come all the way to the bottom and i'm going to generate all the way down generate my wireguard vpn file it's going to ask me to save it uh if i open it can i open it with a text let me just open it real fast no i can't let me just save it really fast there we go i am saved i'm going to save it like that Done. So now I've got my WireGuard configuration file saved. I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to drag it over on the screen real fast, what it looks like. This is the WireGuard VPN file I just got. Notice there's no IPv6 stuff in here. It's just this information. I'm going to need this later, so I'm going to pull this off the screen, and we're going to come back, and we'll show you what to do with it. Uh, we're not going to need AirVPN right now again for a little bit. So now that we've clicked Generate, we can just go back to the client area. Um, this screen just stays here like this. It's no big deal. Come all the way back up to the top and go back to my client area. So now I have six VPN devices. Now what we're going to do is we're going to launch Qubit. So let's come out of here. Let's come out of here. Now, I've already got Qubit going in this R stack, but I'm going to show you guys how to launch it individually. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take down this R stack, and I'm going to jump over to the servers at home wiki, and I'm going to jump down here to Qubit Torrent, and I'm going to grab the first container. This is the Docker Expose, the Docker Compose example for the Hodio with generic v VPN, and I think there's one more here for PIA, but we're using uh, because we're using Air VPN, we're just going to use the generic. So I'm going to want to copy this whole block of text just like this. I'm now going to come over here to my dockage. I'm going to compose, and I'm going to call this Qubit2. And now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to paste. Now, you might be wondering why I'm not doing this in the TrueNAS UI. Unfortunately, there is no... You could do this if you were to do Discover Apps and then a custom app via YAML. You can do it like that. I like Dockage a little bit more. The one way you absolutely cannot do this is with the TrueNAS Apps Catalog. The TrueNAS Apps Catalog will not let you use QubitTorrent with a VPN, so it's not going to work for us. So I'm going to come over here through Dockage because that's what I like to do the most. Uh, so we're going to make a couple quick changes here. One thing we're going to want to do is, you see how my VPN network is like this? You're going to need to change this for yours. So, <laughs> look at my IP address up here. See how it says 1099.0.191? 
that means that I'm on the 1099.0 network. Any IP address that will start from the network that I'm on is going to start with 1099.0 and then some three digit or two digit or one digit number, depending on what my router feels like giving out. That's called DHCP. Yours probably isn't 1099. In fact, I picked 1099 because probably no one uses that. So yours might be like 192.168.1 or 192.168.0 or 10.0.0. something. Whatever it is, you need to fill it out down here. The last number needs to be a zero and it needs to be slash 24. So basically whatever location your TrueNOS server is at, I want you to take the first three numbers just like that. And I want you to copy and paste them down here. I want you to leave the last number zero and I want you to leave the slash 24. Like that. Like that. Uh, leave everything else the exact same. We're not going to change anything except for the volume mounts, in this case, configs and media. So here, uh, this medium path is wrong. In my case, my media is at mounts slash tank slash media. If you want to know where my media is or how I got that, I'm going to come over to my dash, my data sets, and you'll see this is my tank pool. So this is slash mount. This is slash tank. This is slash media. That's where my media is. Um, you're also going to want to use, in this case, I'm using dockage. So I'm going to keep my stacks directory um, just under configs and configs for that. If you want to actually do this with host path, you're going to want to make sure you have a configs directory here and then point it at your configs directory the same way I just pointed at my media file. So I'm not going to touch any of this. Everything else here should be okay. I'm going to head and deploy this. Okay, we are up and running, but we're only going to be up and running for about 10 seconds. And the reason is this container has what's called a kill switch in it. Kill switches are great. A kill switch means that in the event that I for whatever reason, my VPN messes up. Air VPN, either I run out of VPN time because I didn't renew my account, or for whatever, some reason my VPN couldn't start, my qubit will shut down. You'll see this exit code start, exit with code zero. My qubit is not up and running. That's why it says restarting. It's exactly what's supposed to happen. The reason it's supposed to happen like that is because I don't want my traffic leaking on the internet. If my VPN goes down, I don't want my qubit to keep running. Otherwise, it will use my real IP and expose me to my ISP and anyone else on the internet that wants to spy on me. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make sure that this v kill switch is on, which it is by default. And I can see it's working because right now it's restarting. So your question might be, why is it restarting? Why did the kill switch happen? The kill switch happened was because we have not told Qubitorrent what VPN file we're going to use. So first thing I want to do is I want to stop this container. That's going to stop it from just, re it's otherwise just going to sit in a restart loop. I now have to go back out to TrueNOS and I have to add my VPN file in. I'm going to show you where to do that. In this case, you see that I chose to leave my configs at, slash, at dot slash configs. And this dot means the current directory for me, which is mount tank stacks. So I'm going to go into my mount, state, mount tank stacks qubit to configs directory and find the WireGuard folder. But if you change this volume out to like mount tank configs qubit, that's where you want to go. We have to go into wherever this file is, this, this path here. This is what we need. So let's come back out here. Let's go to our system. Let's go to our shell. I'm going to make this really big. And I'm going to do First thing I'm going to do is do a sudo su because that's what I need to do. And I'm going to type in my insecure password because it's just a text box. Now I need to change to the pool uh, where all this stuff is. So qubit2. So this is where my qubit is. And you'll notice here is a compose.yaml to configs. I need to get into the configs. And I need to find this folder right here, WireGuard. This is what it's looking for. So now I'm going to cd into WireGuard. And you'll notice it's empty. This is the reason the kill switch is not functional. What we have to do is make a file here and copy our VPN information into it. So I'm going to do a nano, and I'm going to do a wg0.conf. You can it, Your file must be named wg0.conf. Do not copy the full file over that uh, Air VPN gave you. It's got a super long name for like the city and all this stuff. We don't need that. wg0.conf. Come in here. This is now a text editor. I'm going to drag this over here. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to highlight all of this. I'm going to do a right-click copy. I'm going to minimize this because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to do a shift and insert to paste. I'm going to hold down my shift key, hit the insert key one time. That's the paste. I'm now going to do a control X, then a Y, and now enter. And now I should have a wg0.conf just like that. Now I'm going to jump back into my dockage again. I'm going to restart this container. I'm going to fire it up. And it should start this time. Now you're going to see here it's performing internet connection, connectivity test. Excellent. It's actually testing to make sure my VPN is working. And I'm going to show you how to make sure this VPN is working in a minute. Once this connectivity test is done, it should be up. I'm going to show you guys how to jump into it. I'm going to close out my other qubit so we don't get confused. Come back in here. And here we go. Everything was good. It looks like the VPN test worked well. And this is the logs, by the way, this little window. Everything is starting. My WireGuard service is up and running. That's excellent. It's connected to the VPN. That's how, and I'm going to show you how I know in a minute. 
Let's jump in here. I want to do two things first. First thing I want to do is the username is admin, but the, the web UI administrator password is not set. This is going to be my first time password. I'm going to show you how to reset that. I'm just going to copy that in the meantime. Now let's make sure this is actually working. I'm going to bash into this container and I'm going to do a curl IP. Well, as soon as I can type, I'm going to do a curl IP dot me and I should get this. Here's what you should get. Any number here that's not your public VPN, I mean your public IP address. You should not get the IP address of your router. You should get a different IP address. In this case, I'm getting the IP address of the VPN. I My public IP is not does not start with 37. I can tell you that for right now. So what you might see a couple things here. You might see a curl could not resolve something. That means your DNS is wrong. You might see error could not like conform. That means you couldn't, it means your VPN is not connected. If you see anything but numbers that are not your public IP address, something went wrong. You should see this. This is how I know the VPN is working. Let's come back out to qubit2. Everything looks like it's good. Let's log in. I'm going to click 8080. This is what I should see. I'm going to have to click this bar again. I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. Now I'm good. Admin and I'm gonna paste the password that it, I just copied from the terminal and it should look like that and I'm gonna log in. We're in, we are up and we are running. So what we wanna do right now is we want to come into our settings and we're gonna change just a couple quick things to get up and going. I wanna change my default save path, this is incorrect. This is not correct. My default save path is at media slash downloads. And yours should be too if you set up your RStack folder the way I've told you to and mounted your media set directory correctly. Connection, I have to change this port in a minute. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Speed, I'm not going to touch. That, I'm not going to touch. Uh, RSS, I'm not going to touch. Web UI, I am going to change. I'm going to bypass the authentication for anything on the 10.99. 0.0 slash 24 subnet. That's going to just make my life just a little bit easier. And there should be a way to change my, here we go. I'm going to also change my password just in the case that it asked me to do that again. Uh, under advanced, I'm going to change the interface to WG0. That's the wire guard interface that makes sure we bind to the right thing. I'm now going to hit save and we are back in. Now let's talk about port forwarding. Right now we can technically uh, make this work. So let me come over here. I'm going to add a torrent real fast. This is the Ubuntu test torrent that I use. This is just Ubuntu 24.04. I want to just add this torrent. I'm going to hit upload torrent. And here, I just want to see it start downloading. As long as I get a download here, we'll be good. So just give it a hot second. It's finding its seeds right now. Now it's downloading. Any down speed lets me know this is working. Even if you get a slow speed, that's not important. What's important is that this didn't stall or error out. The fact that this is downloading right now lets me know I am downloading through a VPN and it is indeed working. So that's all I need to do. I'm going to delete this torrent right now because I don't need it. I just wanted to test to make sure it's working. So now what I want to do is I want to get the port forwarding portion of this working. So let's come over here and we're going to come back to every VPN. I'm going to manage my ports. I'm going to add a new port. So I'm going to add a new port to right here. All right, this is not going to be the device. This is going to be, this is my new one. This is going to go to my test device. Uh, it's going to be two, uh, I want it to be IPv4 only. And now I'm going to copy this value. I want to copy this value out here. And I want to go into my qubit. I'm going to go back to my settings, into my connection. And I'm going to change this like that. And I'm going to hit save. Excellent. Now let's do a test open. And my port is indeed open. That's it. And you can see this is device test. This is the correct device. This is the IP I just showed you guys when I did my curl IP.me. This is the uh, the server we picked. And you can see we're IPv4 only. If you didn't click IPv4 only, you're going to get an error for IPv6. That doesn't matter. IPv4 is what we're going to be using. So that's it. That's the port forward. Notice I didn't have to change or restart or do anything. Very quick, very simple. So now Qubit is up and running. I ran a test torrent and I have everything up here working just fine. So this is a quick, just dirty demonstration to show you how fast and how easy it is to get this up and running as long as you're using the right files. If you're coming and using the servers at home wiki, you're following the Air VPN advice and that's the VPN you're using and you're doing this through dockage on TrueNAS and your containers and your volumes are all mounted right. That's it. It was just very few changes. So I hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions, please like and subscribe below. If you guys have any more questions about anything how to do this, definitely hit up the uh, Discord server for servers at home. It's a very busy community. I would love to have you guys join. Thank you guys so much. And if you really want to thank me, please buy me a coffee.